verse 28 and 30. Amen. And the word of God says, now this is after the feast, the wedding feast. They went, uh, Jesus and his family went to a wedding feast one day. You might have heard this story. And they had wine that they was getting their fill on. And I don't know, it might have been Richard's, it might have been old granddad or something, I don't know. <laughs> but it was a wine that was brought to the feast. And, and everyone drank this wine. And it was good wine. I mean, it was good wine. But when the wine was all gone, the king was like, where's the wine? Where's the wine? So Jesus' mother came to him. And she said to Jesus and asked him, would you help them? Would you bless them? And, and Jesus said, my time has not yet come. But as we pick up in the story, I'm reading to the point where we pick it up in the story, that he says the Pharisees came unto him, repenting him, and saying unto him, is it lawful? for a man to put away his wife for every cause. A man to put away his wife for every cause. And a man, he says, is that he answered and said unto him, Have ye not read that which made them, at the beginning made them female and male? And said, For this cause shall a man Leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife. And then the twine shall become one flesh. Wherefore there are no more twine, but one flesh. But therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. They saith unto him, Why did Moses, when he commanded to give the writing a divorcement, and it put away, he said unto them, Moses, because of the handsness of your hearts, suffer you not to put away your wives, but for the beginning it was not so. And I say unto them, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. This was a message that was acknowledged of putting something away that's not right before you. And where we were going is in a wedding feast. This was talking about the marriage. It's something that brings you together. Whatever God brings together, let no man come asunder. But then, when we were talking about the wedding feast, he mentioned about the wine. And when we journey over to the book of John, chapter 2, verse 1 through 10, that's speaking about the wedding feast. And as we read, praise God, starting at verse or chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. He says, In the third day there was a marriage in the Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And do Jesus called and his disciples in the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there, and there, I'm sorry, and there were set, there six water pots of stones after the manner and the purified of the Jews, containing two of those three firstkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he saith unto them draw out now 
and bear it unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the whence the servants drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said unto him, Every one, every man that bringeth doeth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, when they drunk of all the wine, then that which was worse, but thou hast kept the good wine for now. Thou hast kept the good wine for now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you once again asking that you speak to me and speak through me to give this message to these thy people. Help us to get on point and to get an understanding and let your Holy Spirit reign in this place, God, and help us to be able to bless you in your word and message on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If I were to give a message to this, or a title to this message on today, the title of that message would be, Hang On. Hang on, for the best is yet to come. Hang on, hang on, for the best is yet to come. Now, we can correlate that to the level where champions are born in life and made through life. You see, you take, for instance, if you have a sport like a team, they, they, they practice, you know what I'm saying? You practice to perfect that play. Then after they perfect that play over and over and over again, it becomes time that you want to put it against your opponent or somebody other than just your players that you play and practice with on today. You see, when that skill is tested in competition with another opponent, the team that has held out the longest and strongest and best for that day wins. Amen? Mm -hmm. Throughout the course of a season, that's a season, the team that holds on the most in competition gets a chance to go and be crowned champion. In baseball, you have the World Series. In football, it is the Super Bowl. In basketball, it is the NBA championship. But in life, it is life after death, which is eternal life. You see, we must hang on. For the best is yet to come. But understand that, that throughout these trials, throughout these tests, there will be times when you may lose sometimes. There might be times when you may feel sometimes. But throughout all of this, whatever it is that you go through, we must not give up. We must not, must not give in. You see, the Bible says that the race is not won by the quicker or faster runner, but the one that endureth until the end. Amen? Amen. You see, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 30, he said, but many who are first, many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. You might have somebody in your life right now, you might think have a step ahead of you. You might have been always considered the little guy on a basketball team or football team. But it's here where we recognize in the body of Christ, that it is in salvation that we must keep the faith. If we study hard, we expect to pass. Amen? Amen. That's faith. When we practice hard, we, we for game, see? Uh, uh, we expect to win. Huh? That's faith. When we go for, 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 for a job interview, for instance, 
We expect to get that job by faith. If we pray hard and live safe, we expect to go to heaven. Amen. That's faith. But you see, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But I challenge you to move down to verse 6 of the same chapter where it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm. It is impossible to please God without faith. But those that do must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Are you diligently seeking him today? Are you worried about tomorrow or worried about paying a bill or worried about what's going to happen with he said, she said, this, that, and the other was going on behind your back? Are you worried? You see, we have been told that all those who say, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ah, let me say that one more time. All those, the Bible says, that say, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let me hear the church say, God is good. God is good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let me hear the church say, God is true. God is true. Let me hear the church say, God is patient. God Let me patient. hear the church say, God is long-suffering. God is long-suffering. For greater is your reward. For if you just hang on, hang on, the best is yet to come. Some of you have been waiting for a car. Huh? Hang on. Some, some have been wanting to a, a family member to come to Christ. Huh? Hang on. Some of you been wanting a better job. Mm. Hang on. Some of you been wanting a healing. Hallelujah. Hang on. Some been wanting a change in their marriage or in their relationship. I stopped by to tell you, hang on, hang on, because there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's sunshine after the rain. There's light after death, because Jesus, 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 as Romans says in chapter 14, verse 11, as a surely as I say and I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. You see, uh, 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 we did nothing to be saved. It's because of God's grace. You see, it's God's grace that sent Jesus to the cross. But it didn't stop there. They took him, placed him in a tomb. Well, he laid in there all night Friday night, all night the next night, but early, early, early that morning he rose. They jacked him up, and there with your drug addiction. They jacked him up, and there with your brokenness. He jacked him up, and there with your pain and suffering and healing that you needed. But then they raised them high. And as he sat there high, they pissed them in the side. And then with all the other little problems that we have in our life. But it didn't end. Because he took them to a bow tomb. He laid there. But he got up. Y'all, he got up. And he sits at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding on behalf of you. And you. And you and me. So hang on. 
We go through a little something, something in our life. Hey, you might have to get broke down. <laughs> Just so we can pick you back up. You know, we heard some time before of a story or a poem called Footsteps of Footprints in the Sand. You, you heard it before. Well, well, here's the version that I have of it. You know, we, we, we call on them, we call on them, and we call on them. And as we walk in on the sand, we see our footprints. But then as we continue to walk, we start seeing another set of footprints. Oh, when we see no set of footprints, oh, we got, we got happy then. <laughs> we got happy when he said, because we knew he came to it. He came to it. Okay, but then, then all of a sudden, things started happening. We started getting knocked in the head. Come on, somebody. And soon we get knocked in the head. Oh, we think he didn't took off. We think he gone. Right. So when we look down now, he said, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I don't see you no more. I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and recognize this. When you look down in the little sand, he says, my son or my daughter, it wasn't that I left you. You only saw one set of footprints. You only saw one set of footprints because I was carrying you. Oh! I was carrying you. So when you think you're by yourself, you're not. For the Bible says he will not leave you, nor forsake you, but he'll be with you until the end of time. So just as we begin, don't despise small beginnings. You might be going through a little something, something. It's all right. Turn to the hills, which come with my help. For my help coming from the Lord. Amen? Amen. The those there, as the book says, and I'm closing. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They shall soar on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. We must plan and pray and get on our knees when we're lonely. We must plan, pray, and get on our knees when we're depressed. We must plan and pray and get on our knees when we're in pain. Because Jesus, 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 he's a way maker. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's my bright morning star. Sweet cherry on. Swing low. Sweet cherry on. God is an awesome God. He is an on time God. So if you just hang on, if you just hang on, if you just hang on, the best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. God's got a blessing for you. And I know, because he's blessed me every day. I ain't driving no Bentley. I don't think I don't want one, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I ain't driving no Bentley. I'm not wearing Gucci, Prada, Louis Vuitton. I think they even got colognes with them names. <laughs> I, I can't afford, man, hey, let me tell you something. I wear brute if I have to, if I want me a little smell good. They do. I ain't lying. Especially when you get up. Yeah, I know, I know. I know, why not? I'll show you right, partner. And they're coming in different flavors, too, don't they? Uh -huh. So don't despise from the beginning, okay? God is an awesome God. He won't know below for a long Christmas around the corner. You feel me? <laughs> but the one thing is, is that if you be faithful over the little, he make you rule over much. 
And I'm sharing that with you because we were starting off when we started talking earlier today. I was homeless. You know, I had my ins and outs, ups and downs, experiences and falls. I ain't got to get in detail. I think you know what I'm talking about. But if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord, where would I be? I had to learn to let, recognize. And something that we share in Monument of Hope, you have to admit, submit, and commit yourself to God. Because he can't use no, he can't use, he can't use you if you're hard-headed. He ain't going to use you if you're stubborn. Amen. But let me tell you something, he got places for you. Menard, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, what's this county up here? Taylorville. Taylorville. Yeah, okay. I know four of them. I ain't going to say too much, but I know four of them firsthand. And I'm sharing this with you because I'm letting you know I'm not holier than thou. I'm not righteous Richard. But I do know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I had to let go of some things. I had to let go of some people. I had to let go of some family. See? I didn't want to. But I had to. Or God couldn't use me. Because you're always trying to go this way, and then we call it the rubber band effect. I'm trying to go this way, and every time I get this way, I come on. I'm, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And I'm just sharing this with you real briefly because God took me from a wretched state of mind that I was in, but he loved me enough, he cared for me enough. Even when I was in the midst of my wrong, he still, when I was good, when I thought he wasn't there, when I did think he was there, he was carrying me. And when he brought me up out of there, and because I put me into the marvelous light, I held on. I held on. I went from winning one place. I went from another. And then before long, whoo, pop goes a weasel because a weasel go pop. Yeah, come on now. And here we be. I don't rely on no tithes and offering. Because that's not for me. That's for God's house. But this was a blessing. This house was a blessing that God had given me. Took my credit score that was down there and brought it to where I can do something like this. If you know what I'm saying. So don't think you can't get it. I never thought I would stop saying one more. Y'all don't need me to stop talking, do you? Preach. Huh? Go ahead now. Y'all don't need me to stop talking about. Huh? Come on. But God took me from that frame of mind to be about monkey business to be about God's business. And now, hey, uh, he said, don't worry about tomorrow, but take heed of those things that are sufficient for today and let tomorrow worry about itself. Aren't you much more than a bird in the air where they don't know where to sow or what they're going to be? You may not know what tomorrow going to bring. You may not know what kind of money you're going to have mm. in your pocket. You may not know. Yes. You may not know what you're going to eat, but God's going to make a way out of nowhere. He's going to make your nights in the day. Huh? He's going to let the sun shine after the rain. He's going to make you awesome, man. He didn't create no junk. They said he formed you in the image after his likeness, and then he breathed the breath of life. And you became a living soul. Sometimes, sometimes, you just need to. And I ain't just talking about waiting to exhale. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just gotta breathe out. Yeah. Stop tripping. Stop bugging on them little bitty things, man. Okay, you had a drink, so? So what you did, ho? Pass it, bro, puff, puff, ha. Can we talk about it? <laughs> I don't do that, but I'm just saying. Right. I ain't passing judgment on nobody. But you gotta ask yourself this question. You gotta ask yourself this question. If Jesus were to come back right now, somebody say, right now. Right, right now. now. Right now. Right now. Would you be ready? Would you be ready? Oh yeah, just like you walked on downstairs here. Oh, how about this? How about that? He, he peep his head on the run. 
peep his head on around the corner, seeing if you in your rightful spot. You see, this ain't no mistake that you hear. It ain't no mistake that we ain't got no big old cathedral looking crib. You know what I'm talking about? Cathedral looking church. You know what I'm saying? God's letting you know he's alleviating, alleviating all that distractions that we have going through. And I don't have anything wrong with big church. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But all I'm saying, we, we go to the big church now. Now, now y'all know, y'all know. Come on now. You know how we are. Y'all see me in this big old crib and I'm collecting tithes every Sunday. You know what? Drive. I ain't got no car, but I'm getting one. You feel me? First thing go, oh man, look at that. Pass money off. The money gone. I ain't getting no money. No, it ain't about you giving nothing to me. This is first Sunday. Do you know what this day is? If you don't, don't trip. It's okay. That's what we at Monument of Hope going to help you know. But this is the Lord's Supper. This is why he died. And we have to do this in remembrance of him all the time. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I want to do, now I, don't, I ain't never seen this done before. I ain't never seen this done before. This one thing I like to think about, I've been thinking about this all night. You look to your right, you look to your left, you look to your front, you look to your back. Now, we're going to go and read what it say about, about, about the... Uh, Okay, I want you to mm -hmm. go, go read this. But what it is is that before we give in communion, okay, we have to, and we got something against our brother, or we got something against our sister, our sons, our mothers, our father, whatever, whoever, and wherever. This is your opportunity. <laughs> this is deep. To ask for amends. Just say, I apologize for what I did, said, or however, whatever it was. If they're not here before you, come to the altar and just talk to you and God. Because see what you're doing, you know what you're doing? What's that, y'all? Huh? 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 What's that, y'all? See that heel? Huh? The devil. Huh? Huh? Come on, somebody. That's what we're doing. Huh? That's what we're doing because we're openly acknowledging I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong for getting smart at your mama. I was wrong. I was wrong when I didn't take the garbage out, mama. I was wrong. I was wrong when I didn't wash some dishes, mama. Go put gas in the car. No, I'm just kidding. You know? <laughs> I was wrong. And if they're not here, still openly acknowledge it. And then once we do that, I can assure you, I can guarantee you. I can guarantee if you're sincere out of your heart. And you, you, you sincere out of your heart that you want to release that. It's going to come off of you. A weight going to come off of you. You're going to feel different. And you're going to leave that altar or leave from where you're at. And, and, and when we go into this and we give God, and there's a new day for you, man. A triple dog day. <laughs> okay? Because this is a new day for the rest of your life. You took a stand. And you came down here to Miami the Hope. Where what? Hope! Changes everything. Changes everything. That's not saying the monument of hope. Monument of hope in deliverance. Because hope changes everything. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes, Amen. 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 So this is the time we're going to go on knowledge. Rise to your feet. If everyone would, please. <laughs>